So the next person I'd like to bring up here is Troy Topnik. He's from Susa. So Troy's actually been in this community for a very long time. Um, I first got to know him when he was with Active State. Uh, there was HPE for a while, and now he's with SUSE. Uh, so Troy is going to come up here, and he's going to demonstrate the open source foundation incubating project called Stratos. It's a UI, web-based UI, that any of you can use, open source users, or um, anyone can install and point at any version of Cloud Foundry and have a really good view of it. So Troy, come on up. All right. So go ahead and plug on in there. Excellent. You going straight HDMI? Yeah, there we go. Dongles. They're fun, right? <laughs> then we had to change the screen resolution yeah. this time. All right. So you ready to show the demo? I am. Yeah. Delighted to be showing this demo. This represents a lot of hard work from SUSE's cloud application uh, platform team in Bristol, UK, mm -hmm. uh, led by Neil McDougall, Very cool. who, who couldn't be here, but I'm really happy to to up their fantastic work. So this, as you nicely mentioned, is the open source uh, UI in the community. We donated yeah. this to, or we proposed it for incubation mm -hmm. in December last year. And uh, it was rapidly accepted. Thank you, Dr. Max, for, for getting that through. And it's moved into the uh, Cloud Foundry Incubator GitHub org. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it's open for contributions and feedback. I'll get a little bit uh, back to that later, but let's Take a look at it. Awesome. And so just, just again, this is a, this is a user interface, this Cloud is Foundry a, project. It this is an API-based user interface. So you can deploy this in a number of different ways. You can deploy it uh, as a Helm chart. You can de deploy it directly to Cloud Foundry with CF Push. You can uh, deploy it via its Bosch release. Uh, you can just run it as a Docker container. And the reason you can do that, and you have this flexibility as to where it's deployed, is it actually connects to a Foundry using its API endpoint only. So it exercises uh, the Cloud Foundry API, and whether you're a user, a regular user, or an administrative user, you'll see a slightly different interface. Now, I've logged in here as an administrative user, so I'm going to see some things that, uh, that a regular user wouldn't, but the UI adapts uh, uh, to, to show the appropriate view. What? Based on role, right? Based, based on, on role. It's yes. role-based access control, so we've got a role-based uh, UI. Um, for those of you who have taken a look at Stratos before, you'll notice that what I'm showing here is quite different. We have uh, recently refactored um, the Stratos UI to use Angular 2, mm -hmm. uh, which gives us a more forward mobility and uh, gets us, uh, so it's a lot of refactoring work has been done in the, in the last little while. This is not quite feature parity with uh, the V1 code base, but I thought it was important to show it because this is what we want people to start coming in and collaborating on. So the key thing that any Cloud Foundry developer is going to want to do um, is Cloud Foundry push. If your UI can do Cloud Foundry push, you're in good shape. For sure. What I can't show, because it's in the V1 version, but not is yet. CF push. Is, is CF push from the local file system. Oh, I but I can show something that's very cool, uh, which is oh, yes. how we um, deploy this um, from, so I'm choosing the organization and space. That, and, and again, I'm only shown those organizations and spaces that I'm a member of. All this information comes from the API via this API proxy that's working in the back end. And we just specify either a public GitHub URL or a public Git URL or um, a GitHub project and branch. A GitHub Very project. Neat. Has the screen resolution OK? Choose yeah. the branch that I want to deploy and hit deploy. So in the background, the uh, API proxy is going to uh, actually the Stratos uh, uh, backend is going to git fetch this um, and uh, do a shallow clone of it and then deploy it just like you would from the command line. And the, the output you see is just the same output you would see staging uh, using the CF, uh, CLI. Very cool. Very um, cool. Yeah. So we'll let that stage and uh, we'll take a look at the app overview. Again, we used uh, Google's uh, uh, new UI library, uh, which escapes me at the moment. <laughs> We'll come back to that. We can come back to it. Let's look at the features. The features, <laughs> more importantly. So we see an overview here, uh, how long the thing's been up, how many instances are running. We'll see more when it actually comes up. The routes that are assigned, we can add a new route if we want to. 
uh, that same log stream we saw before is going to carry right through to uh, to when the application is deployed. Then we'll start mm -hmm. seeing the, uh, the the log stream. The services that are attached, I haven't attached any to this one. Um, again, in the V1 version, we could uh, uh, create services yep. and bind services from this part of the interface. That's coming soon. We can see the environment variables, and we can we can add them. Very and cool. we see uh, a stream of the events from the uh, events endpoint of, uh, of all the things that have happened in the application's lifecycle. Mm -hmm. We then have some things that are not strictly Cloud Foundry-ish. Uh, yeah, these are the two things that I thought were particularly interesting, right? Because I mean, we've, we, I think we've seen these. most, in most, most interfaces have those, will yeah. have some. Yep. Uh, most interfaces will have some of what we just saw before. Yeah. Um, although you know, it's pretty cool that we can SSH into a container from here. I always like to. That is that. neat. Um, that is neat. Straight from the web. So we see this one's running on uh, SLES. Of course, we also ship our stuff with. Uh, yeah. Uh, CF Linux FS2. Um, so uh, the team recently added this, uh, the GitHub page, which exercises the GitHub API, so it keeps track of what it has deployed, so that if we push new changes, we can actually redeploy the app from the head of that branch. Mm -hmm. um, metrics. We actually have a plugin system uh, that uses um, Prometheus, time series database, was the mm -hmm. word I was looking for yesterday that I forgot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to store the metrics that we've gotten from um, from the firehose or from the the application log stream, okay, and the metrics, uh, and we keeps that. And I'll show how that plugs in. So all of these things, and we can see that this is successfully deployed now. Heroku's 12-factor manifesto, which I use for a demo app, exercises the Ruby build pack. Of course. Um, the one call I talked to a. a a Cloud Foundry user yesterday who uses Stratus UI mm -hmm. and has been deploying it to Cloud Foundry, which sets everything up with the Cloud Foundry that you deploy it to. Um, he did not know about this cool feature, which is the ability to specify multiple endpoints. That's pretty neat. So when we're actually looking at these, this application view, we can look at all of them, and we can see that, for instance, one of the ones that I deployed was actually deployed to IBM Cloud. Not in this case. Very cool. Can't find well, it now. <laughs> so, I mean, the, I guess the value, the point here is that you've, you now have um, uh, the same experience occurring across uh, SAP Cloud, IBM Cloud, exactly. you know, your own Cloud Foundry deployment, as well as uh, Pivotal Web Services, yeah. which is pretty neat. Yeah, so I have just trial accounts on these yep. other ones. So if I go into uh, the Cloud Foundry that we have running on uh, AKS, the, the SUSE Cloud Application Platform that we're, we're running there, uh, I have a uh, a little more um, ability to go in and change things and add orgs, add spaces within those orgs. Um, and uh, we can see the firehose, same, using the same library that, right. that brings us the application logs. And uh, we can filter on that. Again, we'll have uh, substring filtering like we had in the V1 version of this API coming soon. See what feature flags are enable, uh, enabled and disabled, what build packs we've got installed what stacks we're using on the system, and what the security groups are. And uh, we can see some of this stuff, uh, uh, a similar view, but with less things enabled uh, for those, those Cloud Foundries where I'm, I'm just logged just in and connected as a yeah. regular user. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So how do, how do people get involved? Um, there are a lot of developers in the room. This seems like We would love to use I mean, it. That's right? the reason we'd uh, love to uh, uh, solicit some, some feedback and some, uh, some assistance. We've had really good uptake. We've had uh, uh, pull requests and feature right. requests from, from other open source Cloud Foundry users and even other, uh, uh, other partners. Um, so we'd love to get your bug reports, uh, your feature enhancement requests, and uh, of course, pull requests are always welcome. Sure. We've had some good ones from uh, some good stuff coming in from Orange, uh, and you can do that by going to the Cloud Foundry Incubator slash Stratos slash Stratos, and uh, also equally importantly, uh, the Slack channel that we have, which is quite busy and very responsive, and very uh, cool. looking forward to your yeah collaboration and, and input. That's very neat. A UI for everybody. Thank you so yeah. much, Troy. Thanks. Appreciate it. Cheers.